Welcome to this ASP.NET Core Scheduler Control Tutorial. The ASP.NET Core Scheduler, also known as Event Calendar, is used to manage time efficiently by scheduling and rescheduling events or appointments through editor pop-ups. In this video, I'll show you how easy it is to add a scheduler to an ASP.NET Core web application. I'll also show you how to change the current view of the scheduler, add appointments, and use the component's basic features. Let's start with the ASP.NET Core web application creation. Make sure you have installed one of the following versions of the .NET SDK on your machine. You also need to install one of the IDEs. In this video, I'll use Visual Studio 2022. First, I open Visual Studio 2022 and choose Create a New Project from the dashboard. I select the ASP.NET Core Web Application from the template. Next, I'll provide the details like name and location. I'll create the project with the .NET 7.0 framework. The project has been created and is ready to use. Now, I will show you the step-by-step -step process for adding a Syncfusion ASP.NET Core Scheduler. I open the NuGet Package Manager, search for the Syncfusion EJ2 ASP.NET Core Package, and install it in my application. After the package is installed, you can find it under the Packages section. I open the View Imports Razor file, and import the Syncfusion EJ2 TAC helper. Next, I need to add a style sheet and script reference, so I navigate to the Layout CS HTML page and add a Syncfusion CSS style reference using the CDN link. Then I add the script reference and register the script manager using the EJS scripts tag at the end of the body section. I need to register the Syncfusion license to avoid the license validation message. So I open the program CS file and register the license key using the register license method. To add a scheduler, I navigate to the index CS HTML page Include the EJS scheduler tag and set the ID attribute. Let me run this application by pressing the F5 key. Now you can see the empty scheduler displaying the entire 24 hours with the basic views day, week, work week, month, and agenda. The default view is week. If you want to load the scheduler with a different view, use the current view property. I set month to the current view property. You can see the scheduler loaded with the month view. By default, the scheduler highlights the system's date. To change the scheduler to load with a specific date, I add the selected date property and set the custom date, November 15, 2023. The scheduler now displays the custom date. When you click the day view, it shows November 15, 2023. When you click the today button, then it will show the current date. Notice that the scheduler shows 12 a.m. to 12 p.m. You can also customize the start and end hours in the view. To display specific hours, I add the start hour property and set its value to 9 am. I set the end hour property to 6 pm. When I click the week view, you can see the scheduler displaying the hours between 9 am and 6 pm. By default, the scheduler displays views week, day, work week, month, and agenda. You can also choose to customize which of these views should be shown. To do that, I add the eSchedule Views tag to define the required views. I want to display just the month and day. 
So I add the eSchedule view tag and set its option to month. In this view, I show only the weekdays by disabling the show weekend property. I add another view with the option day and set a custom format to the date format property. Looking now, the scheduler loads only the month and day views. The month view displays only weekdays. When you click the day view, the date format is changed at the top. You can add appointments by clicking any time slot and providing a title. Finally, I'll show you how to add appointments programmatically. In the index C# -sharp file, I first define the model class appointment data with fields like ID, subject, start time, and end time with the appropriate data type. In the index razor file, I declare the list variable app data. I add the event details with the required fields to create an event on scheduler, defining the start time and end time is sufficient. I also set the ID and subject fields. To check other built-in fields, refer to the documentation link in the below description. To populate the appointments in the scheduler, I add the eSchedule event settings tag and assign the app data list to the data source property. Checking now, the appointment has been added with the specified subject, date, and time. I will explain more about populating appointments in my upcoming video. Now let me quickly summarize what we have seen in this video. I have shown you how to create an ASP.NET Core Web application and add a scheduler control to it. You can download a working example from the GitHub link shared in the description below. You can also see if you're eligible for our community license, which will get you a free license key to use our products. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it useful, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel.